Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, we're going to be recreating a cover of an album Unknown Pleasures by the English post-punk band Joy Division. Even if you have never listened to any of their songs, I bet that you're familiar with this simple but unique album cover. We'll be using a technique called Perlin Noise to generate these random patterns, and Perlin Noise is a technique to produce random patterns in a more lifelike and organic manner. I have a whole playlist where I go into what Perlin Noise is and also a few examples, so be sure to check those out if you want more practice. I'm going to start by showing you how a noise function works. And to do that, I want to show you the difference between a random function and a noise function. So we're going to come to this draw loop here, and then we're going to create a for loop that goes from i equals to 0 to i less than the width, and then i plus plus. And what I want to do is that I want to draw a series of points on the sketch here from i equals to 0 or x equals to 0 to x equals to width minus 1 and we're going to draw it using a function called vertex, which we can provide two arguments, the x and y location of each of these points. So the x location will be i, and then the y will be, how about we set it at a constant of height divided by 2. And then let's click run. And you don't see anything, and that is because to use a vertex function, you need to also use two additional functions called begin shape and end shape to actually draw out these lines or the shape. So begin shape and end shape. And then you put it just before and after the for loop. All right, so now we have a line that is made up of a bunch of points at y equals to height divided by 2. But we don't actually want to have a constant height, right? We want to use a random function. And how about I put in an argument of 100 and by doing this, it will output a value between 0 and 99.9999. Let's click Run. And because it's between 0 and 99.9999, that's why it's at the top part here. So we can also put in height divided by 2 plus. These random values are generated every time the draw function is called. So I'm also going to put in a function called no loop to stop it from doing that. So by doing this, the draw function is called only once. And these random values are just so random, and this is not what we want to create the album cover. We want a random pattern that is a little bit more organic. So to do that, we can use a function called noise. So let's see how a noise function works. So first, I'm going to declare a variable called end, and I'm going to set end to a function noise. And noise can take in up to three arguments depending on the number of dimensions that you're working with. Specifically for this example, we're only working with one dimension. So we're only going to put in one value. So let's put in zero. And then I'm going to print out what n is. And also we're going to comment out no loop. And as you can see here, the draw function is called over and over again. Two things that I want you to notice. The first thing is that the value is 0 0.267. And that is because an output that is coming from the noise function is between 0 and 1. And the second thing is that the draw loop is actually called 356 times. But the value here is, is the same value over time, right? And that is because how a noise function works is that when we call a noise function, it generates this noise map, in this case, a 1D noise map. That is, there's only one map, and each time you call the program, and the argument that you put in here, in this case, 0, basically just picking out the x value on that noise map, and in this case, at x equal to 0, y equals to 0 0.267. And so if I put in a different value, let's do 100, you would get a different value. But every time the draw function is called, it is that same value. So to use the noise function, what we need to do is that we need to increment this argument here. And how about I just declare this as a variable called offset. And I'm going to set offset to be equals to 0 to begin with. And then we're going to delete this. And we're going to put this end inside here instead. And then we're going to replace it here. And let's click Run. And what you see here is a static value. And that is because right now offset is still equal to 0. So what we also want to do is that we want to increment it by a certain amount. So how about we do 1? 
and you can kind of see things are moving a little bit here but it's almost like a straight line and that is because it returns a value between 0 and 1 so what we want to do is also multiply this output here and by a certain amount so let's declare a variable called r and i'm going to set r to be close to 100 and you might be wondering this is nothing different from the random function the first thing is that why is it keep moving when i told you just now that actually there's only one noise map and that is because we are incrementing the offset value over time over and over and over again so what we also want to do is that every time we call the draw function we want to reset the offset value so that the offset value only goes between zero and with minus one but the value outputs here are still quite random and that primarily depends on the increment that you put here so if i were to change this number to let's say 0 0.1 you can see now that it is closer to each other. How about if I do 0 0.01? Now it looks a lot smoother, right? So the smaller the increment, the smoother the graph that you generate. How about we put in increment here and then set increment to, let's do 0 0.5. No, actually 0 0.05. All right, that looks pretty good. So now that we understand how the noise function works, we can start to recreate this album cover. And as you can see here, the middle portion has the biggest size, right? And that size is nothing other than this radius here. So we're gonna start by actually figuring out each of the points and its distance from the center of the canvas. And we can do that by, how about I declare a new variable? Let's call it dist from center and center is width divided by two so what we want to do is that we want the x location of each of the vertex points minus width divided by two but if we were to just find the distance using this equation it will return a value that also is negative right negative and positive so what we want is we actually just want positive values and we can use a function called abs or absolute and if I were to print this value out, so the size of the canvas is 400 by 400, so the distance from the center should be between 0 and 200. So it's between 0 all the way down here to 200, and then it should go back down to 0, which is exactly what we needed. Next, how about we set r to be equals to dist from center. All right, not too bad, but you can see that in the center, it has actually the smallest size, right? Whereas the as you go towards the end, the size is bigger, but that's not what we want. We want the opposite. So what we can do is we can just subtract distance from center by width divided by 2 and ta-da so in the middle portion here it has the biggest size but it is upside down and that is because positive value in the y direction in computer graphics is this way right so what we can do is we can multiply these by negative 1 ta-da all right almost there the next part is that if you look at the original image, we only want the middle portion to be the parts that actually have these big size and also the organic random patterns. But as you move towards the end, you almost want like nothing. You want almost like a straight line. And how we're gonna do it is that right now, the value R is between zero and 200, right? Because width divided by two, is 200 minus distance from center, which ranges between zero and 200, we want to actually subtract it by an amount, let's say 100. So now this values actually is going to range between, let's see what it is going to range between. So it goes from 100 down, 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 down to negative something, right? Negative what? negative 100 it should be 
yeah, it should be negative 100. And that is because we basically shift everything down by 100. And by doing this, what we want to say is that use a conditional statement that says if r is greater or equals to zero, then we're going to set, we're going to declare a new variable called radius. Let's set radius to r. But else, we're going to set radius to zero. So we're not going to multiply it by anything. And then this r has to be radius. Ta-da! So when the values of r are negative, then now the radius is set to zero. And you can change this value to something else based on how big or how small you want to set these part. How about we declare these as sides value? Not the best variable, but it will do for now. Then I'm going to set it to 100. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw a bunch of them. So if you come to this up here, how about I set another variable called num, and let's set num to, let's just do two. We're drawing just two set of these lines. And what we need to do is that we need to write another for loop. So we want to do a nested for loop. So for let i equals to zero, i less than num, i plus plus, and I'm going to put in this whole thing inside here. And then this that used to be i is going to be j. All of this will be j. Um, and then this one too. And let's click run. Whoops. It's going to crash. It's going to crash. A few moments later. All right, so now I'm back. I wasn't sure what I did wrong in the previous sketch. I think maybe I misplaced a j with an i, something like that. But now everything is all good in the inner for loop here is exactly what we did previously and then the outer loop is basically allowing me to draw a bunch of these lines and right now num equals to two and i only have two lines all right so what we can do now is that we can increase the number of num to whatever we want right but now they're just on top of each other and that's not what we want we want them to be spaced out by a certain amount so we're going to set some margins and then we're going to set some spacing so first let's start by declaring margin x so this is going to be the margin where we start drawing these points so how about i set it to a hundred and then what I can do here, instead of j equals to 0 to j less than width, we can do j equals to margin x. And then this will be width minus margin x as well. All right, that might be a bit too much. So let's do just 30. Looks good. And then let's do margin y. And then how about the margin y will be 50. And I'm going to declare spacing. And spacing is going to be the y spacing between each of these lines. And then we're going to calculate spacing to be equals to the height, right? The height, which is 400 minus margin y divided by 2 and then divided by num. If we divide it by num here and then inside here, what we need to do is that we need to put in margin y so that's just one side plus i times spacing let's try that and as you can see here it's not even and that is because actually we need to do actually this has to be margin times two yep and then num has to be num minus one and if i were to do three now it's spaced evenly. All right. So you can change these numbers to whatever you want. But these size is a little bit too tall. And we can adjust that quite easily, right? So we can just do maybe r divided by 2. Oh, this also has to be radius. And then we can divide this by 2. 
right to get a little bit of a smaller spacing and we actually want a bunch of them that looks more like the cover now okay and then how about we do the x margin to be 50 and let's change the colors of the background to black and we also want to fill the white here to be black also now we can't see anything so we want to set the stroke to white and how about we increase the stroke weight to two all right maybe that's too much or maybe what i can do is i can increase this to 500 and you can play around with all of these variables right what if you do it such that it actually animates that would be quite interesting change the colors change the increment change the numbers change whatever you want and just make it your piece give this one a try